Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka Mono Blue Tron, back with another episode of 10 Minute Testing. So today we're doing a user request for Archfiend something? And after determining that that was not Magical Something's shitty older brother, I took a look at the existing pool of Archfiend cards and may have accidentally come up with something playable. So let's jump into deck edit and I'll show you what I did. Behold, Archfiend Metal Foes. So, before I talk to you about the individual cards in this deck, and don't worry, I'll get really in-depth, because I'm sure a lot of you actually haven't read any of these cards ever, I want to talk a little bit about why I chose Metal Foes and what it means to be an Archfiend. So, for those of you who don't know, Archfiends are an archetype of fiend monsters, and, um, I mean, that's actually about it. Uh, the original print of Archfiends were all chess monsters, they all required standby phase payments of life points, they all worked with this busted-ass old field spell called Pandemonium, but then they started releasing more Archfiends. I mean, you got a bunch of things like Cyber Archfiend, which enables Hellbent strategies, Trance Archfiend, which helps out Dark Worlds, and of course our good pal Archfiend Eccentric, which is an incredible benefit for any deck playing Pendulums. So... Along the way, the flavor of what it actually meant to be an Archfiend sort of got lost. However, aside from the original chess printings, there's one thing that connects a lot of the new Archfiends, and that's that they get an effect like Eris when they're sent from the field to the graveyard as a result of a card effect or battle. Now I read that and thought, what consistent way can we play that allows us to send things from our side of the field to the graveyard as a result of a card effect? And instantly, of course, I popped a Metaphose. There's a bunch of other really great reasons why we're playing Metaphose. Being in a Pendulum deck allows us to make use of Archfiend Eccentric, which is an incredibly powerful card, and also enables a lot of our other plays since she is in fact an Archfiend, and of course, Falling Down. For those of you who don't know, Falling Down is a really busted card from the days of old. It's effectively a better snatch steal as long as you can ensure you always have access to an Archfiend on your side of the field. And with Eccentric being able to recur itself, it seems pretty likely that that will in fact happen. So let me walk you through the individual card choices. First we have three of my waifu herself, Archfiend Eccentric. This is the heart and soul of the deck, allowing herself to be repeatedly summoned means we can not only destroy monsters on our opponent's side of the field, but also always have access to Falling Falling down. Next, we have Archfiend Emperor, the first edgelord of horror. This card sounds like it was written by my five-year-old cousin who just found out Dragon Ball Z was a thing. Uh, he can be normal summoned without tributing, but its original attack and defense become halved, making it a 1500 attack point monster and then destroyed during the end phase. You can't special summon monsters except fiends while this is on your side of the field, which ends up not being a problem because once per turn you can banish an Archfiend from your hand or graveyard, target a card on the field, and destroy it. So effectively, if you've got this guy out, you can repeatedly remove things from your opponent's side of the board, and it doesn't actually matter that you're not doing a lot of special summoning. Next, we have Archfiend Commander. This card's actually pretty cool. He's a 2500 attack monster and can be special summoned from the hand if you control an Archfiend card. After you do that, you have to destroy an Archfiend card you control, so really good in tandem with Archfiend Eccentric because it doesn't really matter if you blow her up. Really, really good with Archfiend Eris because it allows you to activate her effect, etc. Three copies of Archfiend Cavalry. This is just a beat stick, a 1900 four star monster. Uh, but if it is destroyed by a card effect and sent to the graveyard, you get to uh, target an Archfiend in your graveyard and special summon it. This is really good on turns where you are able to get a Cavalry and an Archfiend Emperor out. The Emperor dies during the end phase, and if your opponent destroys your Cavalry on their turn, then you get this guy back. Next, we have another really great card, Archfiend Eris. Works incredibly well with our tour guide from the Underworld, but if it's sent to the graveyard by a card effect or destroyed by battle, you get to add any Archfiend card from your deck to your hand. Next, we have, of course, three falling down. This has a lot of positive synergy with the deck. It allows us to Metaphose Fusion our opponent's monsters, which is really hilarious, but most of all, just Snatch Stealing is actually just pretty good in and of itself. Next, we have the Metaphose. Three Volflame. Of course, three Gold Driver, three Silverbird, two Steelerin because I'm running three Bismagia and I kind of was short on room. I figured this is basically the first thing I want to be cutting. One Fusion, one Full Fusion, two Combination. I tried it at one, but routinely I would just want to set more things. And because this Metaphose deck is less concerned about making big unbeatable boards and more concerned about playing a long control game that ends with you summoning several Archfiends or recurring Archfiend Eccentric until your opponent is out of resources, we're playing three copies of Drowning Mirror Force. 
course. In the extra, we have all the Metaphos guys, one Aura Hulk, two Mithril, two Adamantite, because we have the most targets for this one. We're actually playing two copies, and one full Metaphos Alakest. We then have a rank 7, a rank 6, a downer, a rank 4, and a bunch of rank 3s. So with that, let's jump into the games and see what happens. So the first thing you're going to notice is that we're not playing against a particularly real deck. Unfortunately, that's just going to be a common theme with these replays. The deck actually isn't very good, but it can still steal some games. We're up against someone playing a bunch of monsters that can't be destroyed by battle and like Light and Darkness Dragon and Vanity's Fiend. I get it, but I'm not in love with it. Um, we've opened pretty poorly actually. Two copies of Eccentric, two copies of Commander, and one Eris means we can do our Commander Eris play, but not a lot else. We gotta find ourselves a Metaphone and fast. So we're gonna do the Commander Eris play, destroying Eris as soon as we summon Commander, adding a Cavalry to our hand just because I figure I might as well add something, and then ending our turn. I hope this is enough to not die, and it turns out our opponent is gonna set one card. What do you know? It is. So we draw a Metaphos, which is great. We're going to go ahead and activate our Archfiend Eccentric. Because we have two, I will destroy this one to get a combination. Basically enable Pendulum plays on later turns. And then I'm going to normal summon the other Archfiend Eccentric, blow up this face down monster, and get in. I don't want any flip effects, anything. And it turns out it's Marshmallow, so pretty good target for Archfiend Eccentric. Our opponent is going to go ahead and set another card, Treeborn, of course. And we are going to draw our third copy of Archfiend Eccentric. Let's blow up our Metaphos combination here use it to get a fusion and a gold driver, and then pendulum summon a billion monsters! Now after we do that, we're going to use Archfiend Eccentric's effect to blow up this Treeborn Frog and get in for lethal. So our next match is up against Zombie Synchro, a deck that I don't actually know if this can beat. We've opened all right, let me show you what a turn 1 play routinely looks like in this deck. We're going to normal summon Eris, use Bismagia's effect to destroy Eris and set Fusion. In a world where we don't draw combination, we probably set combination instead. Uh, afterwards we use Eris to get ourselves a copy of Archfiend Eccentric, then immediately set that um, combination and blow it up with Eccentric. Uh, that's going to allow us to get another scale. Uh, we're going to get Gold Driver and then immediately use its effect to destroy Bismagia. Magia, uh, getting us another one at the end of the turn, and a combination set right now. So that's the end of our first turn. We have access to a 1-8 scale, which allows us to repeatedly use Archfiend Eccentric and this falling down in our hand on our opponent's next turn. Of course, our opponent is Zombie Synchro, so they get to do what they want. They're going to start with Upstart, One Day of Peace, Resonator Call, Red Resonator into Mizuki, going into Red Rising Dragon, getting back Red Resonator, gaining 2100 life points, going into Archfiend Dragon All Right, summoning Synchron Resonator, going into Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss. So this card can negate a face-up card until the end of the turn, which means that I'm not really going to be able to falling down it super well. Um, that's not good for me. Uh, additionally, he's going to go ahead and Foolish Burial a Shinrai Solitaire, uh, get that back with a Mizuki, and then tribute it, obviously, for a Unizombie, who's going to send another Mizuki, and then use that Mizuki to bring back the Shinrai Solitaire. It, it really is aptly named. And then, of course, he will go into Void Ogre Dragon. So, at this point, we're a little bonered. I don't really know how we're going to break this board, but it requires our opponent to kind of misplay. The first thing we'll do is flip up this Metaphos combination. Uh, I figure if he negates this, that's good, but of course he doesn't. I'll go ahead and destroy it and get myself a full fusion and... Uh then, of course, a scale. So the idea here is if he negates one of the scales, I can just play the second one. Uh, of course, he doesn't negate the first one, so I'll special summon. Um, I decide to special summon first because I'm going to go ahead and try and get rid of this Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Abyss as soon as possible. Uh, I do get it. This, of course, means I can't really falling down in any meaningful way, but I can also normal summon my uh, God Emperor First Edgelord of Horror and then banish one of these cards from my graveyard in order to get rid of the Void Ogre. So he's basically out of resources here. We are, of course, under one one day of peace, so it's not really worth going for lethal in any meaningful capacity by using Falling Down. Kind of just want to keep it in my hand in case he does any other sort of play. So, unfortunately, we don't really have a way to beat him. We're going to go ahead and use Tour Guide to get Eris, and then Special Summon our way back to an Archfiend Eccentric, then start beating in. Uh, this is not lethal, unfortunately, which is not really what I want to hear. It wouldn't be lethal no matter what I summoned, so, um... I just do this in order to ensure the most amount of repeatability possible. He gets a reasoning, and I go, oh shit, what do I do? So obviously I want Mizuki to not end up in Graveyard, so I'm like, maybe I don't pick four, just so it gets specialed. But I do pick four anyway, thinking it could be like a Shinrai Solitaire, but what do you know, it's Mizuki. And Mizuki gets banished for the Shinrai Solitaire back, who gets banished for a Unizombie, who uses its effect, but what do you know, he's out of Mizuki's, and the game ends.
So this is what a particularly bad hand looks like. You know, we have the ability to play a long, slow game where we, like, use Gold Driver to destroy Gold Driver to get a combination, and then get Scales next turn, but we can't really even summon Cavalry because we don't have anything in Grave. It sucks. Our opponent's gonna Duality, and what do you know, he sees three Stunny cards, and I get a little concerned. He's gonna Twin Twister, targeting my two cards, and, uh, that's not really what you want to do with Combination. I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself another Gold Driver just to make sure that I have uh, access to the one scale. He's gonna play Spellbook Magician of Prophecy, and I go, oh shit. If I had planned on playing a long, plotting game, I'm not gonna be able to against Spellbook. He's gonna go through the motions, Secrets in a Master, Tower, Card of Demise, set a million cards, attack, and then send this Effect Veiler at the end of his turn. So, I figure we can maybe make something happen. I'm gonna go ahead and destroy this card. He flips up Grave of the Super Ancient Organism, and I'm like, sure, I wasn't really intending to attack with him anyway, whatever. Um, and uh, I end my turn with a combination set. He's gonna go ahead and Spellbook Tower in order to add back a Secrets, which he'll use to get another Magician of Prophecy, which he'll use to get a, uh, what is this? Spellbook of Life? Don't know about that one, friend. And then Twin Twister, the Fusion, and the uh, Gold Driver. He has learned his lesson about combination. He then gets in for a thousand. I'm like, well, uh, still maybe there's a way to do this. I just have to draw a Metapho. Okay, so there's a Metapho. I'm going to shuffle this back and draw a card. And I get Eccentric. I'm like, okay, Eccentric can blow up Grand Spellbook Tower. He flips Fate, and I'm like, okay, well, that just is one less Fate I have to worry about. Let's go ahead and do this. We're going to Pendulum Summon a whole bunch, and then I think, wait... What was that card he got from Duality? I don't remember. It can't be the one, the only bottomless trap hole. So with that, I lose. So we're back with the deck. I like the idea of Archfiend Eccentric being an Archfiend first and a Pendulum second, but unfortunately that's just not very powerful. A lot of these Archfiend cards just aren't super good. Archfiend Horror, the first Lord of Horror of the Mega Horror Man Emperor, is just a bad card. You have to actually tribute summon him since he doesn't fit nicely between your scales. Uh, his effect targets and it destroys, which are two things that I really don't want to be doing right now. And most importantly, like, 3,000 just isn't actually a lot of attack anymore. There are a lot of alright hands where you get to circumvent all the weird cavalry setups by being able to commander and heiress on the same turn, but even when that occurs, the deck just feels like it doesn't have the legs that pure Metaphos does. At the end of the day, a lot of our games felt like we were playing like a bad Metaphos stun deck, and cards that are uniquely powerful like Falling Down and Archfiend Eris just weren't good enough to change that Metaphos Prime is probably better. So that's that. I hope you enjoyed watching me try to jam another unfocused archetype into Metaphos. I hope you enjoyed watching Archfiends play chess while Metaphos played checkers. And most of all, I hope you just enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to give me a like, a comment, or a subscribe. It really helps me out. And if you want to see me play the decks I make on this show on stream, I stream weekly on twitch.tv slash monoblutron. There's a link in the description. Finally, if there's a certain deck or archetype you want me to play on a future episode of this show, let me know in the comment section below and I will do my best to accommodate you. Otherwise, I will see you on Thursday.